In this video, we review Azure Bastion, what it is and how to deploy and use it. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and welcome to my channel. There are a few ways to connect to an Azure virtual machine. You could connect over a private or public network with RDP, for example. This works but has security implications, especially over the public internet. In this video, we look at Azure Bastion, a service that provides secure connectivity to Azure VMs. Before that, please like, subscribe, and share with a friend. That helps others find this channel and is greatly appreciated. Check out my courses on hybrid identities with Windows AD and Enter ID, Azure Virtual Desktop, Windows 365 and Intune Management, and my latest course, A Beginner's Guide to the AZ900, available at udemy.com. Links are below. And thank you, channel members. Your support is appreciated. Back to it, a common and simple way to connect to VMs in Azure is to use the Remote Desktop Protocol, or RDP, on Windows and the Secure Shell, or SSH, on Linux. This works, but there are some security considerations with this approach. First, connecting over the public internet requires giving VMs a public IP address and opening the RDP or SSH port to the internet. These are common ports frequently used to exploit vulnerable servers. Most organizations don't want to put servers on the internet because of those security concerns. And there's a cost, although minimal, for public IP addresses in Azure. Also, if we give a VM a public IP address, it uses that to access the internet, bypassing other controls in place with firewalls and content filtering. We could lock down external access with a network security group, only allowing connections from known source IP addresses, for example. This may be fine for small environments or a lab, but would be unmanageable in large environments with many users and VMs. That's where Azure Bastion comes in. With Azure Bastion, we can configure secure remote access to Azure VMs without opening the SSH or RDP port to the internet. Azure Bastion is a PaaS service that supports secure access with RDP or secure shell over TLS from the Azure portal or native SSH and RDP clients. With Azure Bastion, we don't need to open ports or configure network security groups for remote access. It's integrated into Enter ID, so it can enforce zero trust aligned authentication, such as RBAC roles and MFA. You can also log access to keep a record of who's accessing the systems. The management and security features make it a good option for most environments. It's a PaaS service, and of course, it's not free. It's billed hourly and can't be deallocated when not in use. Pricing depends on the region and the SKU deployed. Let's take a look at the SKUs available for Azure Bastion. There are three SKUs available, Basic, Standard, and Premium. Basic is fine for smaller environments that just need remote access to VMs. It's missing features available on Standard and Premium, such as custom inbound ports, connecting with the Azure CLI, host scaling, the ability to upload and download files, shareable links, and disabling copy and paste. Premium adds session recording and the option for a private-only deployment. You can upgrade from one SKU to the next. Downgrading, however, is not supported. There's also a free developer edition of Azure Bastion. This is a shared, not a dedicated option with limited features. Azure Bastion supports host scaling to accommodate a large volume of connections. A scale unit is called a host instance. The basic SKU is limited to one instance. Standard and premium have two instances and can scale up to 50. There's a cost for each additional instance. There's also a cost for outbound data transfers after the first five gigs each month. Azure Bastion supports connecting to VMs in the same VNet or a peered VNet. Virtual network peering is a way to connect multiple VNets so they can pass traffic between them. This allows us to use one Azure Bastion deployment across multiple VNets. This works with virtual network peering within a region and global virtual network peering, virtual networks connected across Azure regions. It also works with peering across subscriptions in the same tenant. It won't work with peering across tenants. Let's review the requirements and steps to configure Azure Bastion. This video will cover the basic, standard, and premium SKUs. Azure Bastion requires a dedicated subnet. The name for the subnet must be Azure Bastion subnet, and the subnet has to be dedicated to Azure Bastion. Other resources cannot connect to it. The subnet must be a slash 26 or larger. A larger subnet, such as a slash 25 or slash 24, will provide more IPs for host scaling, and a standard static public IP address is required. All this can be created when we deploy Azure Bastion. Also, connecting with a native client does require the Azure CLI to be installed on the client. 
coming up we'll create an Azure Bastion with a standard SKU and review the options available during deployment. You'll need a VNet and VM to connect to if you would like to follow along. Let's jump into the portal to get started. Here we are in the Azure portal. At the VNet, we'll deploy Azure Bastion 2. Let's go to subnets. We don't have an Azure Bastion subnet in this VNet. We'll add that when we add Azure Bastion. Let's go to peerings. And that shows there are peerings in place. Let's go to Bastion. This information is to use Azure Bastion Developer. We'll install standard instead. From here, let's click the drop down for a dedicated deployment. It provides a default configuration for a standard SKU deployment. We don't have control over other options if we use this example. Instead, let's select Configure Manually. This allows us to select options such as the SKU and IP address. Select the Subscription and Resource Group. This example will use the VNet Resource Group. Give it a name, Central Bastion, for this example. We can use availability zones and regions where that's supported. Let's select All. Next, we can select our tier. Notice if we switch to basic, the instance count is a static value. Adding additional instances is only supported with standard and premium. Let's set that back to standard and reselect our availability zones. We can add additional instances with standard and premium. The default is two. Let's leave that for this example. Next, let's go to virtual network and select the network that we're creating the Bastion host on. If you don't see the VNet, make sure the correct region is selected. We get a message that the VNet must have an Azure Bastion subnet. Let's go to Manage Subnet Configuration to set that up. This takes us to the VNet subnet page. We'll add a subnet. For the purpose, select Azure Bastion. This sets the name. That name is required for the Azure Bastion. Select the starting IP address for the range, 10.10.100.0 for this example. And let's leave it set to a slash 26. The rest can be left as is. Let's add the subnet. Once finished, we'll close and go back to the deployment. Now our subnet selected. Under public IP address, we can select an existing or create a new one. This example will create a new one. You can modify the name if you'd like. Let's go next to advanced. Here we have some options for Azure Bastion. We can allow or disable copy and paste. We'll leave that enabled. We can allow connections by private IP addresses. This could be used to connect to on-premises computers, providing there's a private network connection with either Express Route or a site-to-site -site VPN. We can use Kerberos authentication with Azure Bastion if there's connectivity to a Windows domain controller. We can allow using a native client. The default is an HTML5 browser client. With this option, we extend connectivity to the native client for RDP and SSH. Let's select that. We can also enable shareable links. Finally, session recording is only available with a premium SKU. That's not available with standard. Let's go to tags, add tags as needed and go to review and create. Once validation passes, click create. This will take a few minutes to finish. I'll pause the video here and come back once it's done. The deployment finished, let's go to the resource. Here's the Azure Bastion we just deployed. We have details about it in Overview. We can get specifics under Settings, including Sessions. There's no sessions yet in this example. We'll come back to that later. Let's go to Shareable Links. From here, we can create a custom URL to access an Azure server. Let's go to Configuration. From here, we can upgrade Azure Bastion to a higher tier. It's not possible to downgrade, however. We can also enable and disable features and increase the instance count. Let's go back to shareable links and create one. We'll click add. Select the subscription and the resource group for the virtual machine the link is for. Then we'll select the resource. Click apply. That creates the link we can share for access to the resource. It still requires local authentication to access the virtual machine. Once we add our local username and password, we're authenticated and we can get access. We'll close out, and we can delete that link once it's no longer needed. Here we are at a Windows virtual machine in Azure. Let's connect to a virtual machine through the Azure portal next. Go to Connect and select Connect via Bastion. 
because it's Windows, RDP is selected, as well as port 3389. We can authenticate by a password or a password that exists in Azure Key Vault. We'll leave it set to VM password. From here, we'll provide the local username and password. Leave the option to open in a new browser tab enabled and click connect. You may have to allow pop-ups for this to work. And that takes us to the VM. We can close this tab. Here we are on a Linux server. We'll connect through the portal by going to connect, connect via Bastion. Here, SSH is selected. Here we have the option to authenticate with a password, password from Azure Key Vault, an SSH private key from a local file, or an SSH private key from Azure Key Vault. Let's set it to SSH private key from local file. Let's supply the username and we'll select the private key file. We'll leave open a new browser tab enabled and click connect. And there it is. We're now logged into the console on the Linux server through Azure Bastion. Let's close that and move on to connecting with a local client. We're going to connect to a Windows server with MSTSC or the RDP client next. This requires the Azure CLI. We have to run a command that passes parameters along to open the session with the client. Let's start by building a command in Notepad. We'll do this just because it's easier to view and edit. Let's paste in the command. I'll provide the link to this command below. We need the Bastion server name and resource group. We can get that from the portal. Here we are in the Bastion server in the portal. Let's add the Bastion name first, Central Bastion. Next, we need the resource group. Next, we need the target resource ID. We'll get that from the virtual machine. This one is on a peer to VNet and in a different subscription. We'll go to Settings and Properties. Locate the resource ID. We'll copy that and we'll paste it back in our command. Let's copy this command and go to the command prompt or PowerShell. This next step does require the Azure CLI. First, we need to log into the CLI with AZ login. Select the subscription of the Azure Bastion. Now that we're logged in, let's paste and run that command. You may be prompted to download a preview extension, agree to that message and install the extension. Next, we get the trust prompt for the remote connection. Click connect. Just like any other RDP session, enter your username and password and click OK to connect. That connects us to the Azure server through Azure Bastion with a native RDP client. Let's check out the connection in the Bastion server. Here we are in the Bastion host. Let's go to settings sessions. And there are the details of the session. Let's close the RDP session and go back to Notepad. Next, let's connect to a Linux server from the native client. We'll paste in the command we need to run. Links are below. We already have the Bastion name and resource group. Let's update that. Next, we need the target or the VM's resource ID. We can get that from the portal like we did in the last example or by running the AZ VM show command. Let's go back to the CLI. This command gets the VM details and then shows the VM ID. We'll copy the resource ID and go back to Notepad and we'll paste it into our command. We could also store that as a variable and use that in the command, but I'll stick with the visual of Notepad for this example. Set the authentication type. This example will use SSH key. Add the username and the file path to the private key. Next, we'll copy that completed command and run it from the command prompt. Again, I updated the command in Notepad just to make it a little easier to read and edit. We'll run the command. You may get a prompt to add the SSH extension to the CLI if it's not already installed. And there we are. That connects us to the server with SSH. That is how to deploy Azure Bastion and connect to Windows and Linux servers through the portal and with the native clients.
That is how to deploy an Azure Bastion host and use it to connect to Azure virtual machines. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.